first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sport, chairman of the General Sports Authority, GSA, and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, Zainal Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, witnessed the signing of an MOU between the GSA and the Kingdom University to support the Khalid bin Hamad's Gold Generation Seat Initiative. The Memorandum of Cooperation was signed on behalf of the GSA by the CEO, Dr. Abdurrahman Askar, and by the university's president, Dr. Hassan bin Rafdan Al Hajhud. In the presence of GSA Vice President His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, the Minister of Education Dr. Mohammed Jum'a and the Secretary General of the Higher Education Council Dr. Diana Al Jahrami. His Highness Sheikh Khalid affirmed that uh, the GSA continues to implement many initiatives and programs aimed at developing the sports sector and concluding many partnerships agreements with various relevant institutions based on its keenness to support athletes and encourage them to achieve academic success. His Highness praised the contribution of the Kingdom University to supporting the initiative of for, uh, for its positive impact on motivating young athletes to obtain one of the initiative seats at the Kingdom University in the future. His Highness uh, the, uh, has also significantly said the importance of strengthening the academic aspect in the career of Bahraini athletes for education's importance in supporting the sectors of the Kingdom, including the sports sector, as GSA gives a considerable attention to science for its contributions to the formation of a knowledgeable athletic generation. His Highness expressed appreciation for the cooperation of the Kingdom University, which reflects its keenness to strengthen the effective partnership with the sports sector. The Bahrain Defense Force BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received a Vice President of the Presidential Leadership Council of Yemen, Brigadier General Tariq Mohammed Abdullah and his accompanying delegation. Defense Affairs Minister Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Aimi was present. The Commander-in-Chief welcomed the guests and praised the bilateral relations which are always witnessing development in various fields. The meeting discussed topics of common interest. The meeting was attended by the Director of the General Command Court, Major General Hassan Mohammed Saad and a number of senior officers of the BDF. As part of the Bahrain holiday season, Al Hikma Society for the Retired held its annual celebration, the 15th Loyalty Day, under the patronage of the Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Al Hikma Society for the Retired Lieutenant General Sheikh Dr. Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. During the ceremony, early pioneers and distinguished retirees from various work sectors in the government institutions, the military sector, and the private sector were honored. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdelatif Zayani, participated in the event organized by the Permanent Mission of Palestine in Geneva on the war in Gaza. Dr. Zayani delivered a speech in which he affirmed that in light of the war in the Gaza Strip, the suffering of the civilians and the continuous violations of humanitarian and international law and all humanitarian values and principles, the international community must intensify its efforts and fulfill its obligations for immediate interference to stop the war. He stated that Bahrain affirms its stance and support for the rights of the Palestinian people and calls for an immediate ceasefire stopping all military operations in the Gaza Strip, provision of protection for civilians and release of all hostages and detainees. He stressed the need to stop killing Palestinians with hunger and thirst, lack of medicine and the spread of epidemics. The minister added that Bahrain calls on the international community to act quickly to end this humanitarian catastrophe immediately, lift the Israeli siege on the Gaza Strip and open humanitarian corridors and facilitate the flow of aid to the people of Gaza. He added that Israel must stop targeting civilian neighborhoods, health, educational and social establishments, as well as mosques and the vital infrastructures. He added that it must also stop forcefully displacing Palestinians from their homes and land. Dr. Zayani stated that Bahrain affirmed that continuous security and stability in the Middle East cannot be achieved without guaranteeing the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people and the establishment of an independent, sovereign Palestine, Palestinian state on the borders of June 4, 1967, with East Jerusalem as its capital. He called to unify the efforts of the international community and to carry out humanitarian measures to end the suffering in the Gaza Strip, adding that the international community is capable of achieving a better future for the Palestinian people and the Middle East as a whole.
Foreign Affairs Minister Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Ziyani met on the sidelines of his participation in the celebration of the 75th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, a UDHR, a team from the Bahrain Bayan School who visited the United Nations office in Geneva. The minister affirmed that such educational visit provide an ideal opportunity to learn about the working method of the United Nations and its various agencies, stressing the importance of the visit, which coincides with the world's celebration of the 75th UDHR anniversary. The minister was briefed on the students' remarks and opinions about the visit. The Minister of Labour and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Labour Market Regulatory Authority, Jamil Hamedan, led the Kingdom's delegation to the Global Labour Market Conference, GLMC, held at the King Abdelaziz International Convention Centre, Riyadh. In a statement, Minister Hamedan said that the Kingdom's participation in the GLMC reflects its keenness to learn about other countries' labour market experiences and to exchange expertise with them in this regard. He noted that the Kingdom boasts a pioneering experience in developing the labour market thanks to its effective policy which have contributed to achieving advanced levels of growth and stability as well as attracting investments that have generated job opportunities in various economic and commercial sectors. The GLMC aims to enhance cooperation among various countries in the field of labour market. It provides a platform to exchange successful practices and innovative experiences to develop labour markets. Bahrain's ambassador to Spain, residing in London, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, held a reception and luncheon in Madrid, celebrating Bahrain's national days. The reception was attended by the Director General for the Maghreb, the Mediterranean, and the Middle East at the Spanish Ministry for Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Alberto Yusale. Ambassador Sheikh Fawaz delivered a speech during the reception in which he expressed the depth of the historical relations between the two kingdoms and the great importance that the Kingdom of Bahrain attaches to strengthening the existing cooperation at all levels. The ambassador noted that the existing political and economic partnership is witnessing remarkable prosperity, affirming efforts to boost trade exchange to reach the ambitions of the two countries and people. Ambassador Alberto has pointed out that or to the depth of the existing relations between Bahrain and Spain, expressing his aspirations to continue strengthening and supporting these relations in all fields, praising the political positions of Bahrain on various pivotal issues. Bahrain's embassy to the U.S. held a reception on the occasion of Bahrain's celebrations of its national days, which coincides with the 52nd anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between Bahrain and the U.S. During the ceremony, Bahrain ambassador to the U.S., Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, delivered a speech in which he congratulated His Majesty the King and uh, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, as well as the people of Bahrain on the occasion. The ambassador praised the Bahraini-U.S. relations, which have witnessed many historical developments and achievements since the beginning of bilateral relations highlighting the most prominent achievements including the appointment of Bahrain as the first Gulf country as a major ally outside NATO and the appointment of Bahrain as a major security partner of the U.S. He also noted the most important agreements such as the Joint Defense Cooperation Agreement and the Free Trade Agreement and signing the uh, Comprehensive Security Integration and Prosperity Agreement during the visit of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to the U.S. which aims to bolster the cooperation between the two countries towards Towards greater unprecedented, unprecedented integrations in the security and military fields, modern technology, trade and investment, and contribution to the strengthening of the security and economic system of the region. Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid expressed pride in the Bahrain US relations, which are built on a solid foundation of common values and interests, which led to the strategic partnership to maintain regional and international security and peace. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. As we commemorate His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's ascension to the throne and Bahrain's National Day. Speaking of consistency, through all of this, one thing has remained consistent Bahrain's leadership and peace. For His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has always been a leader for peace, whether it's at home advancing pluralism and religious tolerance, or abroad, 
supporting major multilateral efforts for peace and prosperity. Transforming those intents into tangible outcomes, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince, and Prime Minister, has pushed good governance and favorable regulations, making Bahrain the country of choice, not only for expats, but also for citizens that chose to get an education abroad, but ultimately came back to serve their countries. Whether it's the investments in infrastructure and education that have made Bahrain a leader in fintech, logistics, tourism, and manufacturing, we continue to look at ways in which we can bring about opportunities for both our peoples. Ladies and gentlemen, the U.S.-Bahraini partnership is the foundation on which much of this progress rests. It provides basically two essential ingredients for successful deployment, security on one end and democratic values on the other. And it is with these ideas that we all must approach the challenges ahead of us and appreciate why the relationship with the United States is so important. And I'm here to share with you that if you are thinking about dipping your toe into the Mideast and starting a venture, or looking to set up a business and exploring manufacturing ideas and concepts, the King of Bahrain, I can tell you from experience, is the place to start. Well, as you know, I was ambassador for three years in Bahrain. Wonderful experience, uh, great leadership. I had lots of opportunities to work with business people, uh, work with cultural exchanges and education. So it was many, many wonderful opportunities. And I'm so happy to be here tonight for the uh, National Day and have a chance to celebrate this occasion with Bahraini people and with their visitors here, many VIPs and others. It's just a great occasion. Bahrain deserves a lot of credit for what they've done. And I wish them many, many future great National Days. Just on this National Day, I want to congratulate the people of Bahrain and their government for all that you've created in your own country, the progress, uh, the prosperity, the possibility, uh, it's immense. But second, I want to say thank you to the people of Bahrain and to the government of Bahrain, uh, because Bahrain uh, is not a fair weather friend, you're an all weather friend. And in tough times and in good times, the United States values our partnership with you. Uh, mm -hmm. And we very much value it now and we're grateful to stand shoulder to shoulder with Bahrain. Uh, 52 years of close partnership with the United States, a relationship that we cherish and are very grateful for. So it's just a good moment to say congratulations. Extraordinary friendship between their two countries. Uh, the United States obviously has a, a large base in Bahrain, uh, but more than the military alliance, it is the diplomatic alliance, the work we're doing to foster peace and prosperity for the region, trying to change uh, paradigms and, and the way people think about the future. I think the future for the region and for the world will be improved because of the relationship the United States and Bahrain share with each other. Bahrain's embassy in Riyadh held a reception on Bahrain's National Day. The reception was attended by the Deputy Governor of Riyadh Region, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Abdurrahman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. Bahrain's ambassador to Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Ali bin Abdurrahman bin Ali Al Khalifa, congratulated His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, wishing them abundant health and happiness. The ambassador praised the depth of the historical relations between the two kingdoms and the continuous development they are witnessing at all levels under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the custodian of the two holy mosques. King, the two holy mosques and uh, the close uh, follow-up of his royal highness the crown prince prime minister and his royal highness the saudi crown prince and prime minister he stressed that bahrain has achieved many successes in recent years at all levels in light of the comprehensive development process led by his majesty the king ambassador sheikh ali said that the kingdom with its historical and humanitarian values based on peaceful coexistence continues its diplomatic initiatives of calling for peace and international cooperation. The ambassador congratulated Saudi Arabia on winning a hosting Expo 2030, noting that this historic success confirms the country's high position among the countries of the world. Marking the deep-rooted relations linking the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom, UK's Ambassador Alistair Long expressed good wishes on the occasion of Bahrain's National Day.
First of all, I'd just like to wish everybody in Bahrain a really happy National Day. We, of course, the UK, have a, a history with Bahrain that goes back many centuries, but to think what has been achieved in this country since 1971 is extraordinary. And standing here on the balcony of the British residence, I look out every day on land that's been reclaimed, magnificent structures that have been built that stand in testament to the progress of this nation. And so I wish His Majesty, I wish uh, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and everybody who works so hard uh, to continue the incredible and rapid progress that Bahrain's making, a, a, a really wonderful celebration. In a statement marking Bahrain's National Day, Ambassador of the United States of America to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Stephen C. Bondi affirmed the excellent relations of friendship and cooperation linking the two countries in a firm commitment to build on developing them for the best interests of both countries. United States-Bahrain relationship is strong and growing all the time. This past year has been extremely significant. In mid-September, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister came to Washington and signed an extremely important uh, strategic security agreement called the Comprehensive Security Integration and Prosperity Agreement, CICIPA. And it really touches upon the most important aspects of our relationship, which is security and defense, trade and investment, and emerging technology. These are areas where the United States wants to continue to partner with Bahrain because they are all important aspects for creating the security, stability, and prosperity we all want to see in Bahrain. Uh, since 1893, there have been Americans here in Bahrain, and uh, you know they created a hospital, a school, and a church all of which are operating today. It's an amazing story. And of course, through our military relationship, through our relationship in oil, uh, we have really tightened uh, our ties. And thankfully, the Bahraini people are so welcoming and so kind. Americans feel incredibly happy here and welcomed, and we love to work with uh, the Bahraini people and your government. Meanwhile, the ambassador of the Republic of China to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Ni Ruchi, expressed pleasure with the joint efforts of both countries to further expand on their fields of cooperation. On the occasion of the Bahrain National Day, I would like to extend my warmest congratulations and best wishes to His Majesty King Hamad, uh, His Royal Highness, Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and all the people of Bahrain. Uh, on behalf of the Chinese Embassy in Bahrain. I believe that under the wisdom, leadership of His Majesty King Hamad, uh, more prosperity and uh, comprehensive uh, development will be achieved. I wish Bahrain people happiness and good health. Uh, since arrive, arriving in Bahrain this February as a Chinese ambassador to Bahrain, I have established a friendship with the people from all walks of life and deeply felt the friendship of the Bahrain government and people and also personally experienced the remarkable achievement of China-Bahrain relationship. Under the guidance of uh, President Xi Jinping and His Majesty King Hamad, the cybersecurity regulations in Bahrain are among the advanced systems in the world as the kingdom works to improve the cybersecurity system in line with technological developments. Bahrain has a well-defined national framework for cybersecurity managed by Interior Ministry General Directorate of Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security in various fields such as energy, finance, education, health and other sectors.